Okay, here comes to the last example I would like to show you. And this is not a concluding paragraph, this is from the early part of an essay called Leading into the World of the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time. It's not the very first it's not the very first paragraph of the art of the of the essay, but it's in the first section of the essay. Before they present the they presented the, their letters to the characters. So let's have a look at the original first. In the following session, we will share the reasons why we choose this novel as the material for the project. It's good that you try to, you, you're, you're telling your reader what they are expected to see in this paragraph. However, I think that this expression in the following session could be slightly problematic because it seems to indicate a different session, not this paragraph. And then you say, First, when casting a first glimpse into the cover of this novel, we are intrigued by the vivid color used on the cover. That's fine. And then you say the title in the plain font creates a strong contrast to the bold color of the bold color of the cover that has caught our attention. This one slightly confusing. What does it mean by the plain font? Uh, is the font size? Is the font type? Is the font color? Okay, there's. Uh, it's not very clear. Uh, another thing is that because here you you have this modifier. This that has caught our attention. It's relatively close to modify the the color of the book cover, and. I'm just curious whether this contrast here, because you argue that there's a strong contrast between the cover and the title in terms of their presentation, and then I'm just wondering whether this contrast might have also caught your attention. Next, you use this expression you use this sentence connector in addition and as I mentioned in the presentation you might think about whether it's essential to have this sentence connector but here you say in addition the upside down poodle sign is also an interesting feature since you have already had in addition you might not need also or maybe you can just return also and remove that in addition because they're pretty, they, they mean the same thing so there's an upside down Poodle sign on the book cover. That's good. It's interesting. That's also good. But I feel there's slight problem with the with this part that has indicated us the key involvement of a poodle in the novel. Why? Yes, it's true. This poodle sign might indicate blood. There is a dog in the novel. But my concern is. Why do you want to talk about this here? If, for example, if you have a statement saying that as all of us love dogs, okay, we are interested in everything about dogs, including books or novels, then you can use that as the reason to justify this claim that, oh, this upside down poodle sign is actually a very interesting feature of the cover and which led us to decide to look at this book and then you say speaking of the poodle wellington the characters are considered the most fascinating part of the novel this sentence is actually problematic because first of all you sh you assume that your reader share the knowledge think about that this is this is, even though this is not the very first paragraph of the of this essay is in the early part of the essay, and also the author haven't haven't talked about the plot, a lot about the plot. So, what is who who is you know, what's the role of Wellington in this particular novel? It's not very very clear. Okay, and also I'm not quite sure whether this sentence fit into this particular paragraph. So you might take it off because I don't feel it's cohesive. And then you say, as the reading process continues, our impression for the character in the novel may change drastically. 
may change drastically. If you want to say it will change, may change, then you probably wouldn't include drastically. Okay? But it's good that you talk about that your impression might change along the process of reading this novel. And then you again, once again, you use this, use this expression besides, like addition, in addition. Okay, again, you have to think about whether you need this sentence connector. And you say, the unpredictable plots and the peculiar narration style have also enhanced their personality. Whose personality? The character's personality? Yes. And their characteristics. Mm, not quite sure what I mean here, but, but again, it's okay. And then you say, as indicated above, this novel, especially for the plot of character, this novel, especially for the plot of the characters, is the main reason for us to choose as the as the reference for this project. I think they probably have to revise this part because it's not it's it's very difficult to comprehend. And then you say thus so that's a bit like a conclusion. We would like to write letters to four characters including Christopher, his dad, his mom and Mrs. Shears. Then you have another sentence say here are the reasons why we choose the activity of writing letters to the characters. Uh, did, in my opinion, you might like to have this part, at least from here, you might like to have this part as a separate paragraph. And then you talk about this, this, the reasons why you chose this activity. So you started with this paragraph with I mean, like the reasons why you chose to look at, to examine this book, to read this novel, to examine this novel. And then you move on to talk about the reasons why you chose to do the activity of writing letters. Okay, so I think that you should focus on one topic in a paragraph. So let's have a look at this part. You say, first of all, our impression of a character usually changes, usually changes. Why usually? Is there, any, is there any evidence to make such a, for you to make such a sweeping generalization? As the plots of story progress and more aspects of the character's traits and personalities are revealed. And then you say, by writing letters to the characters, we can recall our first impression of the characters and how the view changes during uh, during the reading. And this is good. And then the second reason is that since the, since the story is about a murder case, writing letter can help us figure out the relationship between the character. To be honest, you know, this is a causal effect sentence. So I'm not 100% sure whether that reason, that cause, the story is the murder case, whether this can justify this claim that writing a letter can help you figure out the relationship between the character. I mean, you can you can think about this relationship, especially you use the very strong word since. So there sh must be a very strong relationship between A, the cause, and B, the result. And then finally, you say, finally, writing letters to the character enables us to uh, enables us to concretize our imagination of the characters, and it's just like we are having a conversation with the fictional figures. I think that's fine. And then we say, you say, we can express our emotion rea emotional reaction, such as admiration or disappointed disappointment to the character directly. That's all fine. But then here comes the problem. You say also, you say a bit similar to that in the addition besides that you use quite a lot in this paragraph. And then you say also, we would like to understand how the characters react to the murder case and how does the murder case influence their life afterwards. I think for this particular, this part can be regarded as a separate reason. So, here you produce, you see you have firstly, secondly, and then you have this, you have this firstly here, you have secondly, seems to be the second reason, and then you have this finally, seems to be the third reason. But 
how about this part? Is it the fourth reason? Or is is a part of the third reason? But this is a, it's not very clear. For me, that is a separate reason from this finally part. And finally, you say these reason these to the conclusion that we want to engage in this intriguing activity. That's fine. But there's also one more thing I would like to point out in your in the original part. It's a tense. Again, you are reporting what you did in the past. So I still think that it's better to use past tense here. So let's move on to my revised version. I started with initially. We have chosen to read this novel because of its cover. So I try to make it very, very clear, straightforward, that I want to tell you the reasons behind the choice of this book. And I told my reader that it's the cover which attracted our attention. So I say we were intrigued by the bold and vivid color on the cover in contrast to the title printed in plain white. I also mentioned the upside down poodle sign. It's also a fascinating or interesting fe feature to catch our attention. I just make it like that. I didn't move any further. And then I say once we started to read the book, we were immediately drawn into the plot involving Christopher, his family, basically his father and mother, and neighbors, and also a neighbor and his family, a neighbor and Wellington, the poodle who was killed in the story. Uh, I just try to make everything as clear as possible. And by doing so, I also don't need to recap those characters in my next sentence. So in the next sentence, I say the unpredictable plot and the peculiar narration style. I really absolutely love these, these expressions that you use here are so interesting that we find this book the right choice for this project. Once again, and then I stop here, I make it a uh, the, this part as the kind of one independent paragraph. So the whole paragraph itself is used to tell my reader why I chose this book. Then I move on to those reasons why I, we decided to do this activity. Then I started, I, did, I started the next paragraph with, we chose to write letters to, our, to, to the four main characters in this book. Christopher Bone, the protagonist and narrator of this novel, Ed Bourne, Christopher's father, Judy Bourne, Christopher's mother, Ellen Shears, Christopher's neighbor and owner of Wellington. I try to make everything as clear as possible, and also by doing so, I'm telling my reader who the characters are. And at least by, by spelling out the name, you know, it's, I make everything much, much more clearer to the readers. And then I say there are three reasons, or maybe I should say four. Maybe I should change that, but I think they are four. Let me change it here. So, based on my interpretation of the original text, I think there are four reasons. That's why I would like to mention that here. So, there, I, I make it very clear to my reader that there are four reasons I'm going to talk about, about why we decided to, to do this task of writing letter. First of all, our views towards the character change whilst reading the novel. By writing these letters, we were able to recall our first impression of the character and our reaction to the facts and personality revealed along the plot. And second reason, which is about this murder case, I just try to emphasize it. I just make it like, a, with the mysterious murder case, this activity could help us assess the relationship between the character, so that I tone down that kind of causal effect relationship in your writing. Thirdly, writing to the character enables us to concretize our imagination of the character as if we were having conversations with them, as if they are they were having and directly speaking our emotion and reaction to them. I try to uh, summarize the things in one sentence. Finally, this activity help us to so this activity help us to better immerse in the story. Finally, we are very curious about what they thought, what 
how the murder might have influenced their lives after the story finished.